uh, thank you for coming. Uh, we would like to uh, present you our idea of an uh, open uh, Linux for space. Uh, at the beginning, uh, just let me to show. Uh, yeah, at the beginning, I have to say that uh, we have prepared for you uh, some environment uh, to comfortably ask questions. So if you uh, if you scan the QR code, uh, you will be directed to the online application where you can uh, ask questions, which will which we can review at the end of the presentation. And also, we have prepared a few questionnaires for you. So. Uh, feel free to ask uh, if you would like if you would like to. It's uh, to have fun and for us to have some feedback. So uh, we are uh, we are mostly from the uh, let's say Middle Europe. Uh, the most three partners already involved in the uh, Linux for Space projects uh, are. Uh, uh, we are coming from the Technical University of Liberec, uh, uh, and uh, we have partners from Czech Aerospace uh, Research Center and the partners from uh, Czech uh, Experimental Physics Research Center, which is part of the Czech Technical Universe. Uh, our, uh, our partners uh, both have experience in space, and uh, above our heads there is a CubeSat already running based on Linux. So how it uh, all has an, uh, how it all has started? Uh, uh, I think two years or something like this ago, uh, we have started to discuss uh, with uh, some. Uh, we, we have been consulting some uh, European space agency project called Mission Hera, Mission Hera. If you not, if you heard about it, uh, there was a uh, there was a plan, and there is already being uh, made a CubeSat, which will go uh, to Didymos, and uh, there will be also some measurement, uh, and the payload will be driven by the Linux. And uh, our professional history is from the automotive, so, and we know that there is an automotive Linux, for example. So when we have started to discuss about uh, Linux for space, uh, we have started to do a research. Uh, if there is any uh, project like this, like the automotive Linux or any other reference, and we found there is none. So uh, we met uh, half a year in the last December or November. We have met with our partners, which you can see here, and some others on the Czech uh, uh, Space Day or Middle Europe Space Day. And uh, again, we have asked if there is something, and we found there is nothing, and something must be done. So that's why we are here. Uh, what is our aim? Our aim is to bring the collaborative open, open source project, which uh, at the end, our wish is to have a Yocto-based reference distribution, which will be suitable for the space application and the very special, well-defined use case for space. Uh, we would like to bring together all these stakeholders uh, because what we have learned, uh, there is uh, many brilliant people working in the space industry, but, uh, but they are mostly physics or the astrophysics or uh, experience in any other direction, but not so many of them is experience in making Linux. So there is a lot of space for us in this space. Uh, and uh, uh, we have already started, we will talk about it later. And uh, because uh, 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 space applications are expensive, and when I say expensive, I mean horribly expensive. Those people, uh, those astrophysics used to say, well, this is not expensive because it costs just one million euro. Uh, so uh, we have to look for these standards and compliance because uh, there is a lot of restrictions for anything which is leaving the ground and going to the space. So from the beginning, we have started to take carefully uh, in our minds, uh, the European Space Agency standards, uh, uh, they, are called Euro, uh, they are covered by the European Cooperation for Space Standardization. They have a lot of standards regarding the software development, product development, product management, requirements definition, and so on. So we have started in uh, February 2002. So, uh, you know who we are. And uh, if you want, and everybody who is looking to us online uh, is involved as well. So please, if you want, you can ask us, answer our question why you have come. We are wondering.
was told that people who are online have uh, some latency, so we are waiting for you. <laughs> Feel free to answer. In the space application, we are used to latencies. <laughs> Quite normal. Okay, the bars are still moving, so let's say next few seconds and we will continue because we have a lot of to say. Yeah, still moving. But I think that uh, uh, we know the results already. <laughs> okay, uh, and uh, because uh, it was my idea, but uh, my colleague did all the work, I think for him it's time to start now. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and now I, will, I would like to talk about why we need Linux for space and why we need Linux for space just now. Because space hardware starts to be ready for Linux. That means that you, uh, right now you can uh, build your own CubeSat more cheaper than before. You can use uh, ARM-based components and so on. And if I'm now talking about CubeSat, does, uh, have, you ever, have you ever heard about CubeSat? Do you know what is it? Hands up. Okay, that's great. And who never heard about CubeSat? Okay, so I will explain it. Uh, CubeSat is literally cube, <laughs> cube device. Uh, 10, 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters cube uh, with uh, devices for measuring. Mm -hmm. Uh, one, uh, one board controller, uh, EPS, ener uh, emergency system uh, controller, and another uh, other payloads for measuring. And this CubeSat is able to build uh, much cheaper than several, several years ago. This means even you can build your custom, custom your own CubeSat, but the problem is with launching. It's still a little bit expensive. Uh, so, and that's the reason why we are here, because uh, space is not just for NASA, ESA, or JAXA. Space is already for us. It's literally open space for us. So, and that's the reason why a lot of companies uh, create customized Linux, customized Linux distributions. And they uh, had to this, uh, had to this distribution so sustainable for a long time, make some updates, security updates, and so on and so on. And as, as Menka, uh, Lenka mentioned, we both came from uh, automotive industry. And we recognized that the same situation was there uh, was there about 10 years ago, I think, yeah. Uh, because almost every uh, automotive company tries uh, tried to create custom li embedded Linux, and the comp these companies had to uh, uh, sustainable them, had to maintain them, uh, make some updates, and so on. And then came on the stage uh, automotive grade Linux. Uh, we came here with similar idea. We want to make one reference distribution of Linux for space. And that's why we are here. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, of course this, yeah, and this is the, this is the CubeSat for uh, this one who doesn't know. Uh, yeah, uh, space is st strict, uh, strictly defined its use case. We need to strictly define what could go goes wrong, go wrong in the space. We need to uh, write all all about uh, use case, or everything what 
uh, what could happen there. Uh, this system has uh, had to have some uh, requirements be before we start to implementation or uh, developing and testing. So at the first phase, I will talk about it later, uh, we need to collect uh, requirements for these systems. And these uh, systems, uh, uh, I mean, these requirements have to complain to, uh, shall be compliant to space industry standards. Because we are here and we are in Europe, we try to uh, comply with uh, ESA standards. But who knows, maybe NASA, JAXA will, uh, will want to try our Linux for space. So it should be more generic. Yeah, and now a little bit about history. This is just a selected Selected word, uh, selected roads from a journal or article. Uh, below this table, you can see a reference on this article. If you are interested in, you can uh, find this article. It's very interesting, at least for me. Uh, so I select uh, four, uh, four uh, CubeSat missions. First of them is CubeSat. And it was first uh, CubeSat developed uh, in 2003. Uh, and the main uh, goal or goal of the mission was to uh, uh, so I forgot the word. Uh, <laughs> mm, uh, to measure fre uh, low, f low frequency around the ear and to predict where could uh, air change ha happened. Just predict air change. Uh, another one very interested for me is Strand 1, developed by Cerny Space Center, uh, launched in 2013. And what is uh, interested for me is the system on the board. They use Google Nexus One with Android. Hands up, and, sorry, hands up who has or had Google Nexus One. Okay, thank you. So you can build your, your own CubeSat. And last, of course, Falcon and Elon Musk. Uh, plan. No, our plan is divided into five uh, five missions. First mission already is already done, I think, or is still processing. Uh, first mission is collecting of requirements. We need, uh, we want to collect uh, the most requirements like experience for, from our partners, from uh, checks. Uh, airspace uh, research center and others and that's the reason why you are even here because if you are interested in Linux for space and if you want to help us it would be grateful if you want uh, if you join us uh, so the first first phase of this uh, of our plan is requirement collection the second one mission is a requirement definition. Based on the collected requirements, we want to, um, uh, we want to write strictly what does the systems based uh, to be compliant with ESA standards. Third uh, mission is developing, already developing the Yocto distribution, uh, distribution based on Yocto. And fourth is testing. Testing and uh, making sure that the Linux uh, distribution is really compliant with uh, ESA standards or uh, space industry standards. And five is the biggest one because we are going to space. Oh, and that's, this is a next slider for you. Uh, what does the space use case? What defines the space use case? What do you think? 
please <laughs> use your phone again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so let's wait, let's wait two more minutes. Yeah, uh, if you want to support somebody, you can just uh, fill in exactly what you said before. Yeah, it will make a word cloud for you. But feel free to say anything. <laughs> people watching us online and feel free to join us. I really like the aliens <laughs> because of the next slide. <laughs> it looks that star. To participate, yeah, which no one is typing. Yeah, one is typing. I think that this is completely set on our requirements. Yeah, so we already got it. You can check, you can finish your first phase, right? Right. So, yeah, three participants is typing. So we will wait. But I think this the results, the start, the results of this voting again <laughs> seem to be. Yeah. Thank you for all uh, answers. So and now right question, uh, right and you, now answers. You what we have found out. <laughs> May I? Yeah. Yeah. What defines the use case? And it's a radiation, a lot of radiation. You were right. <laughs> that's, that's because uh, we need to think about this because uh, this cube set can, uh, could, uh, uh, could be shut down immediately when the radiation will uh, push them. So that's the reason why we need to think about radiation. We don't have to, uh, we don't need to be, so what? Uh, 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 there could be problems with file system because uh, files uh, cannot be uh, opened for a long time and so on. Next one is limited power. Uh, we call it a power budget. So we need to think about uh, how much the process, uh, how much process run will take uh, our energy from a power system, and another one. There is no graphical user interface. Why? Because we don't need it. We don't need a display on the cube set. No uh, console uh, console interface, line interface, because we cannot jo join them on the, in the space, and so on. Latency, as Linka talked about it, and overheating, hard maintenance. I think that the things. Uh, the lines, the words you write uh, slide before uh, absolutely fit into these slides. And now I will give a word to Enka. Okay. So, uh, 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 during our discussions, we have found out uh, nearly the same as you have found out here because it's really important uh, that the CubeSat works in extremely dangerous environment. It's low power, has no user interface, and has to be able to survive. So uh, uh, such a 
let's say, lack definition of use case, we have decided uh, to create a set of well-defined requirements which are uh, usable uh, to start to implement anything. And uh, our regular meeting started in February, as we told you, and uh, on our web page, by the way, uh, the QR code here leads to our web page, uh, you can see uh, the first venture, which uh, we call it uh, 001. If there is any requirement specialist in this room, yes, it's not final yet. I will explain later. Yeah, uh, but what's important that the, as we have been talking about the uh, ESA standards, uh, we uh, to structure the document and to, work, uh, to from the beginning of the work, uh, uh, we use this uh, standard which is called technical requirement specification, and which leads you through the uh, uh, requirement collection process. Uh, okay. Uh, from the use case, uh, which we have described, and you are now familiar with, uh, uh, we will go to the requirements. So for example, uh, from the radiation point of view, uh, we have the requirement that the system shall switch off immediately. Okay, what does, it, what does it mean immediately? You have a few seconds, because on the CubeSat or on satellite, you have the uh, radiation monitor, and it sends, you, uh, it sends you messages. And when it sends you, switch you off, it means you have to switch off immediately to avoid uh, your memory uh, come uh, on power to the radiation part because otherwise your data will be destroyed. So this is the, uh, let's say, the first uh, stuff. Uh, and uh, from this comes uh, very the, the third one requirement that the file system shall mostly work in read only. You cannot keep your files in memory. You cannot keep a lot of data for a long time in memory because you will have to remove it from memory quite fastly to any storage and you don't have so much energy for that. Yeah. Uh, again, regarding the variability, which comes from the radiation point of view, uh, it's quite typical that you don't have just one Linux there. You have several of them, there are typically four. You have, uh, even the physical unit is, uh, unit is doubled and on this physical unit, you have uh, prepared several instances of Linux in several different memories, just to be sure, uh, just to prolong, let's say, the life of your CubeSat, not to lose your money when the radiation comes. So uh, this ends up with quite challenging requirements for booting of the system. It is planned, for example, to update the firmware, the firmware but again, the firmware update can completely fail down. So uh, booting of a system at CubeSat when it's in the sky somewhere is challenging and we had a lot of interesting discussions about it, how to do it, to fill these requirements. Again, this, those are just sentences. Those are not requirements, I know it. <laughs> um, there are some uh, typical interfaces used uh, in the space world, uh, so we name them here just for you to uh, know what's going on there. And uh, as we mentioned already, there are really horrible power constraints because uh, you, are, you have uh, those um, uh, you have just the sun to give you the energy and um, uh, in the space world, they are working uh, with a term called power budget, and it means that you have given uh, amount of energy for each process, and the process must not over exceed it. Otherwise, the system can collapse, and nobody wants to do it, wants to have it collapsed. Yeah. So, um, I thought that is, there will be some other slide. Maybe I removed it, I don't know doesn't matter. So what do, what do we have now? Uh, we have registered the domain for the project because we think it's really important and you, have, you can find something there. Uh, first of all, there is a registration form. Uh, if you will register, we will send you a link to the meetings. We didn't want to place the meeting link publicly just to avoid uh, any disturbance there. Uh, you can find the first version of the requirements. Uh, Okay, from the engineering point of view, there is a lot of work to be done because uh, they have no attributes and a lot of stuff like this. Uh, we have started to create a dictionary, uh, which we think is also very important. And uh, we already have started discussions about uh, how to implement those stuff in Yocto, for example, uh, how to be ready for different hardware configuration, uh, 
let's say uh, what has to be done in bootloader, what has to be done uh, for the kernel, etc., etc. how layers in Yocto should be used, how distro features should be used, but we uh, haven't published it yet because uh, we haven't finalized it yet. That's something which will come uh, in, let's say, next month and, or next year. And we have those meetings. Everybody is welcome to join us. Okay, so, uh, maybe you want to join us, we wish to, so what can you do? Uh, you can uh, join the meetings, if you are not interested, we are publishing the minutes of meeting online, so you can read it there, uh, you can help if you're interested, you can help us with the distribution, because the, I know that at this conference is, it's full of Yocto specialized developers, you're welcome. We want you. Uh, uh, you can use uh, the, this distribution to be tested on your device or you can provide the hardware. We have agreed with the Czech, uh, Czech Aerospace Research Center that their hardware will be one of the first which are to be tested there. Uh, our other plan is uh, at the end of the work just, do, uh, just to start the stratosphere balloon which will probably hold something based on Rosberry on something really light as this, so it will be in other reference hardware. So feel free to join the penguins going to space. Uh, the next community meeting uh, starts, uh, I think this is next 30, yeah, next week, uh, at 15 o'clock uh, of the Central European time, and you can scan the code to get the invitation. Yeah, so, now it's up to you. We are really, really wondering to get your feedback, looking forward to get it. Uh, the, the more means I, if you uh, put 10 means I really love the idea. If you put just one star, it means, well, okay. <laughs> Not interested at all, okay? I know that before about uh, 35 people have answered, so let's wait for your judgment. Okay, I have another question. Uh, you can understand what the question is. <laughs> you don't have to answer, but I will be happy if you will answer us. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Finally, we got this answer so I can go <laughs> to the last slide. Uh, uh, you can ask the questions online. I hope I will see it somewhere. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there are no questions online, uh, or you can ask your question directly, or give us any comments, feedback, everything is welcome. But there are questions already? Okay, so I will go there. Okay. Uh, yeah, the first question about the reference board. As I told you, we have agreed with uh, our colleagues from National Space, uh, National Aerospace Research Center that they uh, will provide their board for testing. Uh, and it's a board based on ARM processor, which already uh, uh, has been tested in the space application near the surface. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, 
space uh, CPUs used to be Spark. Uh, they are still used. Yeah, the second question, space CPUs used to be uh, Spark and sometimes MIPS. Uh, are these no longer used as much? They are. But uh, there is a slot opening for other hardware as well. Still, if you would like to go, let's say, with Mission Hera to Didymos, uh, Didymos Moon, you still need to have a hardware which is tested for radiation. But there is already existing uh, the uh, ARM, I think it's ARM7, and it has FPGA core with it together. Uh, they, used it, uh, they used it on a mis uh, Mission Hera to... Uh, uh, to comprime the data. It surprised me that, uh, I don't know if you know it, but uh, uh, they have just, I think, nine, kilometers, nine kilobytes per second. They have a lot of data measured there, but uh, they need to get down at least two pictures. Yeah. So that's why uh, we think, uh, if you can imagine such an application, uh, the powerful CPUs will appear again more and more. And again, there is that uh, the CubeSats are very often going close to the Earth when the radiation is not so bad. And as uh, building the uh, CubeSat is really cheap compared to the satellite, it's, uh, you can simply throw them to the space and let them survive for a few months. And it's still much more cheaper compared to other stuff. Okay. Uh, are you planning to align with a microchip and they recently awarded NASA contract? Uh, there is a big... Uh, we didn't plan it yet. Maybe in the future. Yeah, there is a lot of work to be done. I know that there is a lot of activity regarding the Risk Five, uh, also in the Europe. Uh, so, we will see. Okay, is there a typical telemetry uh, protocol being used? Yes, it is. I think it's that uh, mentioned CubeSat protocol. Um, uh, there are a few of them. Some of them are used. Um, uh, some of them are used uh, at the big satellites, and you have to pay to have drivers and so. And some of them are free. The CubeSat. No, free. it's free. Okay, okay. Our our friend told us that uh, I think the space wire. Uh, uh, CubeSat is free. Okay, um, CubeSat is free. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so the protocol, okay, you can implement it. Yeah, you can implement it if you want, but if you want to use, yeah, that's right. Thank you for correcting me. Okay, uh, Linux is too big. Yes, it is. <laughs> too many point of failure. Yes. <laughs> so that's why we agreed that we will join Elisa as well uh, with our use case. Uh, uh, why not to uh, low level OS such as uh, Zephyr? They, uh, you know, there is uh, some Ertos at uh, the CubeSat always, because um, I think that, uh, okay, I don't know if anybody did that, but so I will say 99% of CubeSats uh, are, uh, the main, main system is uh, some uh, Ertos, and the payloads are based on Linux. Yeah. Uh, this is very important, because you still cannot have reliability which is required for the main computer. But again, uh, as uh, there is a lot of complicated software to be running on, uh, on that, uh, on the CubeSat, for example, as I mentioned the, exam uh, the example of the uh, confirmation of the images, uh, those images now are not standard images. It's called hyperspectral image, and it's quite more complicated compared to standard JPEG, let's say. To, comp uh, to comprime it, yeah? So um, uh, Linux can find its application in space. It's not just, we can do it, let's do it. It makes sense to have it there, but yes, you're right. The editors will still remain there for reliability. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, uh, so, any, okay, there is a lot of questions. These were just uh, questions you liked. Uh, yeah, the question regarding the, um, the hardware. Uh, we would like to provide some reference hardware 
but we would like to uh, design the distribution to be open for you to add the hardware. Uh, just we will set the rules, what should be done, what should be tested, uh, to keep the standards compliance, let's say. Uh, uh, how long uh, is the CubeSat expected to be alive? Well, until it dies. <laughs> but, uh, do you know? Two years, yeah, typically. No? No? Yeah, okay. So you seem to be really experienced. Come here. <laughs> uh, and I think maybe, I don't know. But they are just naturally dark, right? Like the sun is pushing up against something. Okay, uh, any other questions? You can ask them directly as well or comment it directly. Okay, yeah, uh, there is a micro, you can use it. It stands here. Um, so I have a question about the testing hardware. So how expensive it is and from which country and by using uh, some media, how, how could I get that? Sorry, once more. How could I get the test hardware board? You have to buy it. Sorry? You have to buy it. Uh, so, how much? <laughs> I don't know. These are prototypes. They just want to set uh, the Czech aerospace. They have started with the current board, I think, two years ago. And they would like to provide it. And that's, uh, they have testing it. You, have, you can to ask them. That's why we wanted to add the uh, also Raspberry-based example, just to, for everybody who wants to play with that and show his friends that he is running Space Linux in his room to be able to do it. Yeah, I was thinking that the last question of the talk, which was asking if we are intended to join in this community, could be very different if we were able to know when and how we could get a test hardware. That's very important in my point of view. So that was my question, and thank you for the answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can discuss it. Thank you. Yeah, we can keep it on contact. Okay. So can you easily get this space wire hardware for Raspberry Pi? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, we, uh, we have decided to start with the CubeSat. We know that uh, uh, if our ambition will grow, grow and grow, we have to, at the end, have the Spiceware and Spice Fiber. But at the beginning, uh, to keep it doable, we would like to implement the CubeSat and be ready for other protocols and hardware. Okay, are there any questions? May I ask our moderator if there are any questions uh, in the online tool? Because pe people who are watching us online can ask questions as well, as well using that tool. Well, actually, probably there are no questions. So then, thank you all. <laughs> <laughs>